Hello. This is episode two in the, the video vibe podcast thing, but it's the 76th episode of Mildly Disappointed Total in a totality as it is as it stands so yes i'm gonna be d- i'm doing like i said i'm gonna be doing these more often so i think that's why i'm here in the studio thing room it's a spare room but you do what you can in times like this isn't it because yeah i'm gonna talk about fucking corona again we've been extended last night to uh, so now we're on season two of week of 21 weeks 21 second yeah second season of 21 weeks so uh, 21 days what am i talking about 21 weeks fucking hell that's half a year but now we are so the ramaposa ramapomestad posi says uh memes are fire there says that we have to stay in our homes for another 21 days so they extended the lockdown by two weeks so we are stuck still loving it though still loving it not sure how long it's gonna last there is a little bit of uh, what's going on a little bit of cabin fever going on but uh i'm managing to mitigate it my biggest worry is other people out there uh the people who aren't looking after themselves the selfish people who aren't looking after themselves people who are going out willy-nilly just fucking doing whatever the fuck they want thinking ah no it's fine it's fine no no like also like initially people think like oh okay it's a problem because it's not a problem for me it's a problem for old fuckers or people who are asthmatics or people who are smokers or whatever but no there are healthy fucking svelte individuals fucking who are getting it too people are everywhere it's like fucking it doesn't discriminate bro it's not racist it's not bigoted it's not ageist the coronavirus does not discriminate any motherfucker can get it that motherfucker could be you Doom and gloom, boom, boom, boom. So, just fucking be careful. And then don't go out, man. Don't go out and fucking, just don't go out, please. Like, try not to go out as much as possible. Like, I've been arguing with my dad, and he's in his fucking 70s. And he's going out to every day to get his paper, his newspaper. Firstly, who the fuck still reads the newspaper? What's the point? Go online. Yeah, the death of journalism, whatever. If it's going to keep you safe, don't buy the fucking paper. It's wasting trees. It's wasting... Just it, it, If it's going to save your life, Father, do not go out to buy a fucking piece. Of, go, don't go out to buy the paper. I don't get it. And my dad... But I mean, he's got this old school fucking mentality of like, ah, oh, I'll never get it. It's not going to happen to me. Bro, what, he's, he's in his 70s. He's drank most of his life. And he smokes... Like a chimney. Um, okay. So that, so, and he says, no, nah, I'm not going to go out. I mean, I'll go out. I'll be fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry. I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to get it. But dude's got fucking Beyonce level confidence with Lizzo looks. Do you know what I mean? Like what's going on here? Fat bastard going out thinking they're fucking Beyonce. What the? No, 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 no. You are susceptible. You, you, you got way too much confidence for what you're working with. Okay. Beyonce level confidence with Lizzo looks. That's what's going on with my dad. So I'm fucking worried about him. I'm worried that like, but also, what are you, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna tell? What are you gonna say to a seventy year old dude? What are you gonna say? I mean, like, dude in his seventies, he's he's not gonna listen to me. He's like, he's gonna do whatever the fuck he wants. He knows better in his mind. So, whatever. I try if I can help him out. Bought him some groceries so he doesn't have to leave the house. I don't know if they still they've lifted the ban on cigarettes. Um, I fucking I just gave up smoking and i just like decided okay well this uh i I didn't have any for the like on the the first day of lockdown i had none so i'm like okay i'm not gonna i'm just not gonna buy more and here we are however many almost i think two weeks in now no problems haven't smoked also didn't drink as well didn't buy any booze because i decided i'm not drinking anymore either there's no point i don't fucking need that shit i just like whatever what am i gonna do is it gonna be depressing and fucking shit and i'm like and also like i haven't been i haven't drank since when is the last time i drank it oh in june in january in january i think it was in january that i fucking last drank so yeah i've been out the house just to go shopping and that's it otherwise i've just been fucking here trying to uh, keep the exercise going keeping the meditation shit going so it's yeah it's getting a bit it's getting a bit strange though it's getting a bit weird being inside all the time i don't know i'm not enjoying it as much as i was but still getting a lot done still in still not enjoying as much as i did 
but still enjoying it. S- keeping myself busy. I think that's important. Keep yourself fucking busy. Keep yourself going. Keep fucking doing things. And But I don't know what's going to change. I don't know when it's going to change. Is this going to make a massive difference? Are things going to change? Oh, we, like, w- like, you know, we just go, okay, here's an extra two weeks. Here's an extra two weeks of fucking, yeah, hmm. What's work how's the what about the economy and all that stuff? Like things do there is a, a obviously a massive knock on effect from this. And it's like are buying banks gonna stop charging you interest? The biggest fucking schneisters that lives. Are they the, the uh, that exist? Are they the ones they they're gonna say to you, Oh no, we'll help you out. We won't charge you interest on your car, on your home, on your loans, on everything else. Highly fucking doubtful. They are not they 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 might like give you a brief. They might say to you, Oh, okay, well, like, I don't even know if they're doing this, but they'd be like, oh, no, you don't have to pay while you're fucking there. Well, how about fucking lowering or helping out or fucking doing something? No. Motherfuckers who want to make money are still going to try and make money no matter what. So I guess you can't fucking, I guess you can't really, uh, like, I guess, you, who, I guess you can't really, really knock them. That's the model that they used to. They're just like, ah, fuck it. We want to make money. We don't give a shit about what you guys say. So you must pay us regardless. I think the repo rate dropped. They wrote, they dropped the, the interest rate like uh, as a whole. So things went down. I don't know. It didn't seem to reflect on my payments this month. So whatever. But we'll, yeah, we'll see where that goes. And then I, I, I don't like... I don't really listen or watch or care or bother with the news. All I need to know is that it's still going on and we're still in lockdown and still haven't had my hair cut or shaved my beard because I don't see the point. I'm going to go full mountain man. Obviously, I'm showering, but uh, not fucking, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, yeah, fucking live with people. You can't go full fucking stinky, but I'm not going to bother fucking shaving my beard or getting my hair cut. I'll get my hair cut when I'm done. You know what I mean? It doesn't really matter. It's like, who do I have to look presentable for? It's just me. If I can, I don't even jump. If I jump on a Zoom call, I just hit the. Um, actually, it's just presentable for you guys, the guys watching. But like, if I jump on a Zoom call, I just like boom, no video. Ha ha, can't see me. You can hear me. Uh, but it's like, this is kind of. I feel like this is the way things should be done, especially for the industry that I'm in. I don't really need. I'm, I'm like at the office. I'm spent like I'm spent. I spent my entire days behind a computer anyway. I don't really do much. And maybe I'll go to site every now and again, but I'm not. <coughs> I'm not really going out, of leaving the office that much. So I could do this from home. I could do my job from home for good. So that's cool. So there's got to be there's positives behind this. There's like okay, well, they they we're changing, we're changing the way people think because obviously us being around each other all the time and such freaking. You know, we the the nature's saying like this isn't good for us. We we need a new way to fucking work things out. So um, I've obviously been there. There's obviously ways that you have to try and deal with the boredom, and there's only so much exercise and do. So Netflix is the shit, and a podcast, man. Podcast is the shit. Podcast is what I love. So I fucking I'm obviously gonna just. It's the way I consume information. So I li- and it's also the way I disseminate information. Disseminate, just dis- jizzinate, <laughs> yeah. coming in the soup of podcasts. But the that that could, so I've been I found like the, if pod, so if you are looking for shit to do and you can't find fucking if you like at your wits end and you're getting bored, there's lots of fucking cool content out there, especially on YouTube, free shit as well. If you don't have Netflix, check out Jessica Kirsten. She's an amazing comedian. She's fucking hilarious. Check out her podcast, Relatively Sane. She's got episodes with Big J Oakerson, another comedian, Jim Brewer, Bill Burr. Just horrible murders at night after I have debilitating anxiety and depression. My wife watches that. I'm like, w- I'm not watching this before I go to sleep. This is not relaxing me. Oh, she also watches me. that show where those people come in with medieval level boils on the side of their face. <laughs> like I saw this lady, it looked like she had two speed bags on the side of both ears. She's like, this has been bothering me for a while. It's like, you're just getting to this now? <laughs> what the fuck were you putting in front of this? Max out. Your she watches card. the p- pimple popping, that whole fucking thing. Dude, if I was that woman no. and I didn't have the money for the procedure, I would take a steak knife, heat it up <laughs> over a gas <laughs> flame, and <laughs> hey, hey. Okay, why do people want to watch other people popping shit? 
It's very popular. It's oh, I could th- throw up thing. even thinking about it. Thing. I'm not kidding. It's a thing where uh, everybody has a weird thing that they're into, I think. Something like, or, or a thing yeah. that's outside the mainstream. Like, you know, everybody, everybody loves whatever. Everybody loves toast. Sorry, I don't have a good fucking example. But there's just certain things. Everybody, you know, likes a fucking, I don't know, a cheeseburger. And then there's mm-hmm. some people, you know, that eat crickets. Uh, you know? Um, there's like, she's got like 60 something episodes. Up. She's brilliant. And I've realized that I've, like, how much I like podcasts and just like watching people talk, watching people talk shit. The History Hyenas, two boys from Brooklyn. Um, they say some mad shit. No, they also interview comedians. They are comedians as well. But they, 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 they talk about history and they are off the chain. They talk so much shit. They, yeah, they don't really In care. In the 1640s. They were like, all right, every, all the Europeans out, get out. Right. And then for 200 years, they're like, nobody can come in. If if someone would float up and accidentally, they just murder them. They're yep. like, just all these foreigners out. And then in like the 1860s, they're like, all right, we're going to, we're going to, these, all these uh, Westerners have guns. We're going to like kind of, yeah. we're going to compete. And then by like 1905, they took over Taiwan. 1910, they kicked the shit out of Russia. And then it's just like, then they take Korea. Like, they just kicked ass so quickly. Yeah. And I think some of it is just in, like, some of it is that Shintoism. Yeah. It's that belief that we're related to the emperor, who is God, so therefore we are God. Right. So, like, it's like, we even live in this age where, like, like you know, master race stuff like, we think of that as World War II, but it's still kind of brewing sure. around. But, like, it's still kind of, like, something that, like, people are dealing with. And that, like, I think we're naive to think that that, that stuff is over. Yeah, and you, oh, know, yeah. you know what's ironic about it, too, is that it's the antithetical to what's healthy for your genetic code. Absolutely. Like, the right. more diversity you have in your genetic code, the Better health, immune system. healthier immune system, you know. But yeah, we we loved it. Greeks are like we inbreed. It's yeah. like yeah, if, yeah, yeah. Greeks want to marry Greeks until the baby's yeah. born. Just one block of feta cheese well, with an eyebrow. Uh, that's what I'm. Yeah. I'm interested. I mean, yeah, because you can like, tell that you're inbred because your eyes are too close my, together. Yeah, my we eyes say are that. way yeah. close together. That's an inbred. We yeah. say that I look like John Stamos if he had special needs. Special needs Stamos is yeah. what we call him. <laughs> what, so, <laughs> so, so but we, it's like uh, what is what is the thing about what is the curiosity of watching people just talk, just having a conversation? Is it the, I don't get it. The the appeal. I mean, I love it. I do it all the time. I and I also expect people to do it with me, like me, just like sitting here ranting and spouting shit, like some makeshift fucking news thing or whatever, giving you not really anything interesting or information wise. But for me, I it is something that I would watch. It is something that I would get into. I watch Chris D'Elia's podcast as well. Congratulations, which is just him talking to a camera. Yeah, he's fucking hilarious as well. But it's like we have to. I love how politicians are like. Make no mistake, we will get through this. It'll be hard, but we will all survive. We will get through this. And it's like, yeah, we will get through this. But only the people that get through it. Some people are going to fucking literally die. So what do you mean? I always want to fact check those motherfucking... You see that British prime minister with the fucking hair that looks like dumb and dumber, but he went through a fucking car wash? Look, like it looks like literally, literally the prime minister of fucking Britain looks like if Jeff Daniels in Dumb and Dumber, and if Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber had a baby, that's what his hair would look like. It's a ball cut, but it's still messy as fuck. And he's like, make no mistake, we will get through it. And it's like, yeah, the people who get through it will get through it. What about the people who are face down on respirators that are going to hear, oh, soft color, but also true. And there's, there's comedy in truth, you know? Anyway, I don't know. That's the thing about podcasts and this type of thing. You can find exactly what you're into. And there's this old, I think it was like a <coughs> old Stephen Pressfield article. I think it was Stephen Pressfield. And it talks about, uh, like, or was it, is it Stephen Pressfield? I don't, I don't know. But it's, no, I don't think it is. Ke- it might be Kevin Kelly. But it's called A Thousand True Fans. And this idea of like, yeah, okay, there's celebrities like fucking Drake or tiger or tiger king or <laughs> but like in most of the people that i have no idea about who have th- like d- like the celebrity status this droves and droves and thousands and millions of followers and people who are into them or whatever that's one level but to comfortably make a living 
All you need is a tr- thousand, what he's called, Kevin Kelly calls a thousand true fans. A thousand people will buy everything that you put out, who will listen to everything that you, s- that, that you, that you speak of, who will come to your shows, who will buy your products. That's all it takes to make a successful business. And it's, now that, that's also the thing about this type of media is like you're not governed by anyone. You're not governed by, the, no one's telling me when I can do this, when I should do this, how many episodes I should put out, what I should say if I say something offensive. No one gives a fuck. But the thing is me putting out my own shit, being authentic and not caring what other people think gives me the opportunity to find people who connect with this or enjoy it or don't give a fuck in the same way that I do. Or if it offends people, I don't give a shit. Do you know what I mean? It, like it doesn't make a difference. What are you going to do? It, like, you, what are you going to take away from me? This is mine. I'm not going to stop doing it because you don't like it. Like offense is your problem. It's not mine. And so, it, and th- th- that's the nice thing about this. It's like, it's like, oh, you don't like it? Click or next or unsubscribe or whatever. You don't have to fucking do it. You don't have to worry about it. And I can be the person that I want. You can be the person you want behind the camera and then the, or behind fucking watching it. And you don't have to care. You don't have to care, but I just don't understand. This is like the hate, and the people will be like, "Oh, this is offending me." Ugh. Fucking in the comments, you dick, Ugh. and they're like, they'll say something like that. Those people are so sad to me because all you have to do is the power comes in not being an asshole. Power doesn't come from being an asshole and commenting and being a bitch or being mean or being horrible. The power comes in and just being able to. I don't like this. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm going to shut it off. Do you know what I mean? So. That's what's quite powerful, and then this, this is this. That, that's what I've seen. I've seen a whole spate of, and of, I've seen the the podcast that I listen to or watch. I've seen the numbers go up, and I've seen like there's also cool comedians in South Africa doing shit like, like, um, like there's lockdown with Mojack, and um, they, like they, they just it's just two dudes chatting every day about fucking comedy and riffing and laughing and that type of stuff. This. I miss Cat Williams, bro. Yeah, dude. I've been, I went down the wormhole, Cat Williams wormhole, like the other day as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> he could just say anything and then it's just fire. <laughs> Cat does have that ability. Just. <laughs> I like mama. I'm a mama laid. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you could do an old hour of is he's like scrambled nigga where they scrambling to where are they scrambling to oh niggas they are just scrambling nigga they are just scrambling <laughs> 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 you just love you just love whatever <laughs> whatever he said he could read anything bro. It'll be a shopping list. It's like oh, five kg. Oh no, nigga, five kg. Oh no, <laughs> nigga. How was these beans baked? You ain't even put them in the oven, nigga. How was they baked, nigga? How, how are they baked, nigga? This is <laughs> nigga. This so called skip. I'm supposed to just move on. My clothes is dirty, nigga. <laughs> This ain't an advert, nigga. This ain't an advert. This is dirt, nigga. This is dirt. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Cat Williams, where we are. <laughs> Stay safe, my nigga. Stay safe, Cat. We need you, bro. <laughs> He's probably yeah. I'll never let him like talk to you in these times, nigga. Corona, nigga. Corona, nigga. <laughs> Cara- nigga, I drink Corona. I ain't scared of <laughs> I, I'm a thug, nigga. I'm a thug, nigga. I'm not gonna hit me, nigga. Corona scared of niggas with perms, nigga. Come on, <laughs> everybody know that. This is... Ah, uh, shit. This uh, is... And they're just putting shit out and having fun with it. And it's this is the new shit. This is the way things are going. And it's... A projection that was obviously go- <coughs> was very right, championed by Joe Rogan, but he kind of never even knew where it was happening or what was going on or anything like that. But it allows you to do whatever the fuck you want and to be the person that you are and be the person you want to be and not really pander or worry or whatever and just put shit out and just see what happens. I mean, I don't care. Fuck it. Like, if people don't like us, what am I supposed to do about it? It's not. Then it's not for you. It's just simple. It's just simply not for you. But if it is for you, then cool. Enjoy it or like it. I don't know. So it's. I think it's a good thing because I'm able to practice social distancing. 
buy it and also put shit out and do what I want to do. And social distancing seems that I've something that I've inadvertently been training for my entire life because I'm introverted and awkward and I don't like going out to pubs and clubs and bars and shit like that. I feel weird and I don't care about those people and I don't want to interact. I'd give me a dinner party or give me a braai or give me something that's relaxed and chilled and uh, like I'm not... Like if it's yeah, I'll go out to like if it's a favorite band or something like out of mine or like music that I really enjoy, then maybe I'll go out to that. But if it's not, what's the other things I'm not interested in, and and that whole like mass social thing, I'm not. It's not my vibe. It's not what I'm into, and it's like. So I've been practicing social distancing. Or this it, this, this fits again right into my wheelhouse. It's perfect. The only child syndrome comes through again. I love it, and then. I've been practicing social distancing, but oh wait, no, maybe it's more emotional distancing, which is then <laughs> probably more unhealthy than good. So I've been practicing social distancing, but I've also been practicing emotional distancing, and that's why I'm single. But then, you know, that's just something I have to de- <laughs> that's something I have to deal with probably with my therapist when I find a n- find one. Or hey, you can do them over Skype, I guess. You could always do that over Skype. I wonder who's getting hit. I wonder who the people who are getting hit most by this whole thing obviously like the poor and the impoverished by this whole like by the whole lockdown or by the coronavirus as a whole but i wonder who the the the, ramif- the ramifications of people who you think won't who will struggle what about the thoughts what about those poor instagram thoughts the ones who s- put their booty out and their currency is their body are they getting sent money for promoting products? Probably. They probably still are. But what about the, the sugar daddies who keep them, their sugar daddies who keep them funded? They can't see them anymore. They can't be the Instagram thoughts who are selling their ass over the internet. I wonder if they're still doing okay. What are we going to do? Maybe let's, let's start a GoFundMe for the Instagram thoughts. Keep those women like Kayla Lauren up, up and going. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. She's good looking, but it's like, I don't know. Create a, let's create a GoFundMe for the Instagram <laughs> Instagramos to keep their to keep their booties out, and because they are they can't be lounging around by the pool taking photos of their shit anymore. Like, look at me. Um, I don't know. I'm sure they'll survive. A thought will always survive. They'll always find a way to survive. There's always going to be something for them. Oh, yo, I got a drippy nose. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully, I don't have the Rona. Oh no, that's gonna suck. I don't think I do though. I've been very careful. Hand sanitizing the shit out of myself. Does it like just well my hands. But just be careful about putting it, does it it doesn't double as lube, someone a friend told me. Um alcohol burns the private parts. It's like a hmm. It's like a it's like a deep heat. So a friend told me it's like a DP. So yes, uh, I wonder how much like your Pornhub must be doing so well. Huh? Pornhub must be killing it. Must be killing it. I think. I don't know. So people must be saying that that's that's what people say. Um, I don't have any personal evidence with regards to that. That's just something that I think might be happening. Uh, Netflix, Pornhub, podcasts. Uh, I wonder what else is doing really well. The obviously like Zoom and fucking any chat, any chat uh, or any like any network or social uh, video conferencing software or anything like that, they're probably killing it. Fever, anything that's fever or fucking anything that's um, detection related with regards to this virus. I mean, imagine how well those companies are doing. If you have a device that screens for fevers and that type of thing, that they they could be making some money at the moment. Oh. It's weird though. Like, what's? It's like uh, I guess like making money, money in the time of Corona. It's like love in the time of coro- cholera. It's like, yo, oh, that's interesting. Eh? That Gabriel Garcia Marquez book. That shit's coming true. It's just like, how do you find it? The Plague by Albert Camus. These guys, fucking these uh, Nobel Prize winning authors, you know, from the turn of the last century. They are all the century. I don't know. Eight, n- n- early i don't know when they were written but they this shit's coming true it's kind of like this was predicted it's like this was on the way we knew this was going to happen but we just don't heed the signs because it's like we 
like there's a whole the whole vegan movement and i understand it like the whole like factory farming and all that shit is like peep is like cows being corralled into these tiny spaces or like or pe- uh, like being stuffed on top of each other it's not good it creates disease and all that type of stuff and then it's also but thing is like people are like cattle as well we're being stuffed into these small enclosures in these massive cities and those are the ones that are being affected most china is a good example New York is a huge, it has a huge instance of coronavirus because they're all living on top of each other. I don't know if it's particularly healthy. That's why I guess in South Africa, well, that's why I think in South Africa, we have such a, a lucky, whether we're actually the ones who are lucky or the ones who are, aren't are living in poverty are lucky in so far as that they they don't, they can social distance and they can like have a garden and they can still be outside and have space without having to worry about this whole epidemic i mean the people on the f- the people who are living so close to each other when your neighbor is less than six feet away from you when you're living in these conditions what are you supposed to do i mean it's like i think it's i think it's more of a that's more of a concern than anything else and is it yeah it's like is it the planet fighting back or is it the chinese government is there a conspiracy? Are they trying to overthrow? Ooh, because they have they have they. I'm um, just hypothesizing here. I don't know if I believe. I don't believe any of this shit. But this is the this is the theories that are being espoused that they created this virus, put it out into the universe or into the in on that they let it out or whatever, and then they are using it as a place of domination. There's um, someone. There's like. Someone Rubio, I think it's Mar- Mark Rubio was talking about this, that there's a big uh, about how like it's a dominance of China. But the trade imbalance with China is problematic because of how it's happened. China was basically a poor, underdeveloped communist dictatorship, and it decided it wanted to open up to the world and become more economically prosperous. This was many years ago. And so the deal the world made with China is, we're going to help you develop economically. You're going to open up, we're going to help you invest, we're going to help you create opportunity, we're going to let your companies invest in our economies. There are rules in the world for trade. There are things that are allowed and things that are not allowed. For example, you are not allowed to steal another company's secrets. So if another company has figured out how to make something that's proprietary, they own it, they developed it, they spent money creating it, you are not allowed to go there and steal that from them and start making it yourself. There are rules about, you can't have rules that say your companies cannot sell in my country, but my companies and from our country can do whatever we want in your country. There are rules. China has never played by those rules. And everybody knew it. Nobody disputed it. But administrations from both parties, the consensus politically in America was, go ahead, let's let China cheat. Let's let them keep stealing things. Because once China becomes richer and more prosperous, they'll stop doing that stuff. As soon as China's economy grows big enough, not only will they stop doing all that, but they'll become a democracy. Everyone who said that was wrong. That is not what's happened. They are less democratic, less open today than they used to be. And they are no longer just stealing little secrets to kind of even be in the same ballpark. They are stealing $600 billion a year of intellectual property. $600 billion a year is equivalent to what we spend on the U.S. military. They are stealing the equivalent of that every single year. How do they do it? Well, first of all, just straight out espionage. Time and again, I mean, they, they, they hack computers, they hack emails, they have spies embedded inside of companies. Just they straight out steal it through espionage. The second thing that they do to protect their industries and grow at our expense is they don't allow many of our companies to do business in China. Huge market. Their companies get to do business here, but they don't allow our companies to do business there. Some companies. They do allow other companies to do business in China, but here's the deal. If you do business in China, it has to be a joint venture with a China com- Chinese company, 51% Chinese, 49% American company. And on top of that, there's another catch. If you want to do business in China with a Chinese company, you have to transfer your technology to them. So you want to build 
you know, turbines. We'll let you build turbines in China, but you have to transfer to us the technology of how you do it. You know why they do that? Because once they figure out how to do it themselves, they don't, they don't need their American partner anymore. They kick you out, and now they're your competitor and may even put you out of business. May even and it's it's very interesting. I'll put the link in the show notes about like uh, his speech about this. And you decide for yourself. That's what I'm gonna leave you with. You decide for yourself. I'll leave you with that. So we like the, the interview with all the this what Mark Rubio said. So I can it's you're winding my watch. Um, so I'll leave you with that. And then also watch the King in the uh, Skull. She looks like the shittiest Mortal Kombat character you can get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> finish him. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess finish him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to finish him. <laughs> get over here. Get over here. <laughs> get over here. <laughs> Cup of noodle. <laughs> there you go. Finally, Brandon fucking coming with a joke, bro. Tell me, Ben, what episode are we in? <laughs> 64. 64, man. <laughs> Wow, bro. Oh, man. Didn't you do a music video with her, Theo? Yeah. Did you engage with her at all? Uh, <laughs> no, she was a child. Then. Why you got to ask him like that? Engage? Bro? Like, was there any interaction? Yeah. When you ask if a child, in a, if an adult and a... <laughs> and a and hey, a, hey, you want to have a seat? Child. You huh? want to have a seat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, have a seat. <laughs> Which is funny because of what Theo played in this video. Yeah, That's he's a creep. You, oh, yeah, I played a pedophile in this video. <laughs> <deal. laughs> You and DeLeo always get cast as pedophiles. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I did. I will tell you one funny thing that happened on this video set. Uh, I don't have the video, but I She I'll makes good it. music, man. Huh? Her music ain't bad. Well, here's what happened. David Spade hit me up and said, hey, you should do this music video with Bad Baby, right? And so I was like, oh, man, well, obviously, you know, I want to impress David Spade. This does. And she had just put one out that he was in that was really good. So if you look up that one, he was like a milkman in it. It was really dope. And I was like, oh, this seems You thought really you were going to be cool. something funny in it. So I thought it was going to be cool, yeah. So then I get there and they said, oh, we use a pedophile. And I said, nah, man, that's, that's just a rumor. You know? <laughs> they said, nah, that's your character. Yeah. And they said, that's your character, boy. You, you got all defensive? You got no proof? Yeah. They're like, what? <laughs> what? No, it's a character. <laughs> yeah. Those videos are fake, man. <laughs> well, no. no. What? Oh, my God. So, but. That's another one of the podcasts that I'm watching for. So look for cool content, support podcasts, and support this one. Please subscribe to the, um, if you're listening on iTunes, subscribe. Please also rate and review on iTunes. I really appreciate it. And also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click the notification bell button. Click the bell. Click subscribe so you get these episodes as they come out. If you liked it, just share it, please. If you could share it, I'd really appreciate it um, on whatever social media pla platform and uh, what else? Oh, like the Facebook page, Mildly Disappointed. Follow me on Instagram, Andy Mack, A-N-D-Y-M-A-C-K-E-D. Yo, I've got cabin fever brain. And stay safe out there, you cunts.